Thank you for tuning in to Serendipity with Sheila, the podcast that helps you align your mission with your passion. As a universal master energy healer, Sheila can help you awaken and align with your true self so you can live the purposeful life you were made for. Let's get started. Welcome back to Serendipity with Sheila, and I am your host, Reverend Sheila B. Tillick. And today we have myself. I'm actually going to share a little bit about my adventure and how I got to where I am today. I'm going to share with you the five books that actually changed my life and what they mean to me, how it happened, and how I'm using it now in my life. This is pretty extraordinary because I've had an amazing life and I absolutely love what I do. And a lot of people always ask me, how did you get here? How did this happen? Well, I've always been a reader. I absolutely love reading. And when I started my metaphysical journey, reading was the way that I did it. At the time, in the early 80s, I started realizing that there was more to life than what I was living. You know, I've always been able to connect with angels. So they used to call me, and still do, the actual angel lady. That is because ever since I was a child, I've been able to see and actually hear angels. Now, I grew up Catholic and I also am hard of hearing. So I could hear the angels and I, a lot of times I couldn't hear many things that people said. However, I was told as a child that I could not talk to angels and hear them and, and that I needed to um, stop saying that I could. <laughs> it was a lot of the Catholic guilt that I brought up with. So anyway. My communication with angels have been from the very beginning, and I really never embraced it until the mid-80s when I started to actually do the work that I needed to do to be able to move forward in my life. So the angels are still a part of my life and always have been, and they actually kind of led me to my actual self-discovering of things that I needed to heal and things that I needed to do. So in the early 1980s, I started reading a lot of metaphysical books and you know during that time it was kind of like um, not the thing to do because I was actually a Lutheran church secretary and here I was involved with reading metaphysical stuff so that didn't go over too well so I had a lot of guilt over that but I just knew that I needed to find out more about this metaphysical stuff and how I needed to change my life. So I started seeing coincidences in my life and Years later, I read the book by Squire Rusnell, and the book was called When God Winks, How the Power of Coincidences Guides Your Life. Well, when I read that book, it was many years after 1985, but then I knew that reading that book was part of the coincidences in my life that I had to acknowledge. You know, I started seeing so many things that I could not deny that I knew they weren't coincidences. I knew they were actually God instances. And so when I read the book, When God Winks by Russell, by Mr. by Squire Rushnell, I knew that, that this was part of my path and that I had been, always been seeing different winks in my life. I've had a lot of tragedy in my life, and one of them uh, was when my mother passed in 1989. And then also, my sister was killed in a car accident in 1990. Now, this is part of the coincidence of things, because it was in 1993 when my actual mother-in-law died. And what was beyond my understanding is that I knew when my mother-in-law was going to die. She died on the same date, November 11th, that my sister, who I was very close with, died in a car accident, November 11th, 1990. And also, what happened was my mother-in-law's funeral was in, on November 15th. That was the same day that my mother had passed away on November 15th, 1989. So I started recognizing numbers and dates and I knew that this was a sign that I needed to work on myself and that I was going in the right path. So that was part of my journey. You know, my 
part of my journey and the serendipity of the things that were lining up in my life. Going forward, another book that really helped me actually change my life was a book by a doctor named Gabor Mate. And this book was When the Body Says No, and it's about exploring the stressors in your life, the disease connection in your childhood. For me, I love Dr. Gabor because I could relate to him. He was a doctor that specialized in families from addictions for over 20 years. And he comes from Vancouver, British Columbia area in Canada. He also then went on to specialize in hospice work. Now for me, I started going to nursing school in the 1990s to be able to become a nurse midwife. And I knew that many things needed to be dealt with and explored in my life. I also knew that there was a lot of stressors in my life. And Dr. Gabor helped me understand so many things about myself, my own childhood, and the life that I had as a child, and all of the past trauma I had as a child. Dr. Gabor specialized in addictive families, and I came from addictive families where both my parents were active alcoholics. So I learned unhealthy behaviors or really behaviors of survival. And I lived that way throughout most of my adult life until in the 80s when I started to waken up. So Dr. Gabor's book really helped me understand that the stressors in my life had a lot to do with the environment that I lived in, but it also had a lot to do with the stressors that my parents had endured from their childhood that was passed on through the DNA, more the psychological development of them and how it was passed on to me. So that really helped me make the connection between uh, how my body started to develop and some of the ways that I dealt with life. I personally got into recovery myself for alcoholism and it was in 1993. However, it was in 1985 when all of this stuff started with me changing was when I started going to Al-Anon, 1985. And Al-Anon was um, an area of help, a group that helps with people with dysfunctional homes, whether it is adult uh, of children I was actually an adult child of alcoholics, but also many other types of uh, unhealthy uh, environments and how it affects you as a person. And Alan helps you keep the focus on yourself, learning about yourself. So 1985, Alan really helped me on this journey to where I was going. So when I got into recovery in 1993, and I started learning about myself, it really helped me put the pieces together with all the stressors in my life and how I managed the stressors in my life. And one of the ways was the psychosocial part was what I learned in the environment that I grew up in. And then also how do I deal with stress? So that was through drinking. Even though I didn't drink every day, I still was classified as an alcoholic. And I did something to take responsibility for that. I actually got into recovery for myself and started working a program. And I'm gonna go back to 1985 and going back to things about myself that I started to notice. Because of all the tragedies I've had in my life, um, I was able to start to communicate with my loved ones who have already passed over. My father passed away when I was 15 years old, and he was only 48 years old. He died in 1970. And also I had a brother, Kevin, who actually died in 1973, three years after my father died. Now, since they both died, I could feel them around me. I could sense them. And that was part of the God instances too that was starting to show up in my life very, very early. So when 1985 came along, a lot of these communications, my loved ones, started to get stronger and stronger. 
When I was in nursing school in 1993, I learned how to do hospice. And I absolutely loved it is because then I can actually acknowledge that I was connecting with spirit, especially the patients that I would take care of when I would volunteer at different hospice homes. Dr. Matei also specialized in hospice families. So as you can see, his book about when the body says no and who he was helped me understand so much about my soul, so much about the stressors in my life, and also the big spiritual part of all of this. So his books really helped me understand myself, especially as a hospice worker, and then also to start stepping in to my power as far as my abilities to be able to connect with spirit and what that meant with my life going forward. So as I started to grow over the years, I started embracing my abilities to connect with spirit and I started mediumship schools in 2010 and 2011. And during that time, I found out about a woman named Suzanne Giesman. And Suzanne Giesman had the book, Messages of Hope. Messages of Hope really helped me totally understand that my loved ones were still here in spirit. They really hadn't gone anywhere. They had just risen to a higher vibration. And I knew from a soul perspective that they were still around me by all the connections I had with all my loved ones that have crossed over. Messages of Hope really helped me understand my family tragedy and that they never really die. And also, my purpose, why I'm here, to be able to communicate with them as they passed over. I love being able to communicate with spirit and there's so many stories I have with communications, but that will be stayed for another podcast, which I'm going to share the story with my brother Bob, which was, I think, one of the most profound communications I've had. We appreciate you and honor your time. I wanted to take a brief moment to hop in and let you know that Sheila is available to be booked for the following event types. IET classes, group soul body fusion transmissions, group galactic star mother transmissions and activation. And you can also book Sheila to speak as a recovery metaphysician or a galactic grandmother on a wide variety of topics. If you would like to discuss your options and details, jump on a free discovery call with Sheila. Now back to the show. But back to beautiful book that Suzanne Giesman wrote, Messages of Hope. So Suzanne Giesman is a former Navy commander and she's written many, many books. But I really highly recommend that you get the book, Messages of Hope, and you will totally understand that spirit never dies, that we are never alone, and that we are all here to help each other. So please take a look at Suzanne Giesman's book, Messages of Hope, and all of her other books. We'll be glad that you did. Another book that actually helped change my life was called, called Message for the Tribe of Many Colors. And this book was written by little grandmother, Keisha Crowther. Keisha, actually, um, it was a young grandmother in her 30s where she was uh, named as a shaman and did a lot of shamanic work, her connection with Mother Earth and her connection with spirit. And also the connection with the new energy that started to come in during that time. How the Aboriginal people connected with Mother Gaia and that they all knew that they came from the stars. Also, the Aboriginal people knew 
that there was going to be something that was going to happen where humanity was going to change. And her book fascinated with fascinated me because what I knew that she experienced, I also had experienced. Her shamanic teaching and her connection to Mother Gaia since she was a child was a lot was how I related to Mother Earth. I grew up out west and I always very connected to the Southwest traditions in the Native American culture and also my love for the nature and how it made me feel and how I got such joy out of it. So message for the tribe of many colors really helped me understand who I was as a spiritual soul and also my connection with Mother Gaia and my desire to want to be a shaman. And that's exactly what I did. I went and got shamanic training in 2013 and 2014. This is part of my journey of where I've been. Being able to read books and connect with them in such a profound way is so instrumental, I believe, into the serendipity in our lives, where we are going and how we got there, and the knowing that we are here for a reason, the knowing that we can make a difference, be the best person possible, and also to make a difference for humanity. So as I started to develop very quickly, by the way, after 2012, Many things were happening to me, and I do know now that it was part of this new change of humanity. It was what little Keisha, little grandmother Keisha Crowther was starting to talk about, which was going to happen, that humanity was going to change. And it did start to change after 2012, when we started to have the procession of the equinox. And the procession of the equinox was part of the energy shift in Mother Earth and its connection to this, the galaxy, the actual planets, and also the magnetic field of the Earth. So as I started to change in the early 2012, 13, 14, with my training that I had, I heard about a channeler named Cryon. Cryon is channeled by a gentleman named Lee Carroll. So Lee Carroll, I started listening to his channels and I absolutely loved them and I connected with them. And I kept hearing my brother who passed in spirit, he died in 2012, another brother. As I said, I've had a lot of tragedy and I come from a family of 10 including my parents, there's eight children, I'm number six. So my brother George, who passed away in 2012. In the early 90s, my brother used to tell me about this guy named Cryon. And remember, I said I was a church secretary. And I kind of didn't kind of believe the stuff that he was saying, and I was kind of afraid of it. But my brother George was a metaphysical researcher and philosopher. And he used to tell me about all these different people that were out there that did different things. And one of them, he told me about this guy named Cryon, Lee Carroll, who channeled this entity Cryon. So fast forward three or four years later, after he died, I remembered him telling me in the early 90s, 1990, about this guy named Cryon. So I started listening to this channeler, Lee Carroll, who channeled this this entity called Cryon, and I fell in love with who I really was, that I was a soul, and that I connected to this beautiful new energy that was around me at that time. After I started listening to his channels, then I got his latest book, book number 14, that came out in 2017. 2017 was a very profound year for me. 
You see, that was a year that I finally went to my very first Tryon event. And I met this gentleman, Lee Carroll, and all the other people that are part of his team. And I knew I was at home. Because I read the book, The New Human. And The New Human talked about the changes that were happening in humanity. And what happened in 2012 when the magnetic field changed. With this magnetic field, our actual spiritual DNA started to awaken. And we start to actually live our divineness. This is what happened to me. I started to stand in my power in 2017. This is when I went back to school and got my bachelor's in metaphysical science. I became a metaphysician, <laughs> actual uh, ordained metaphysical minister. And also in 2017 is when I went and I also became a licensed heart math coach through Heart Math Institute. Heart Math Institute is about the collective consciousness, the global coherence initiative, about connecting the consciousness field of everyone and this consciousness field about love and about how you can actually go inside and actually build self-resilience against stress and trauma in all areas of your life. With the techniques, you actually can connect with a higher consciousness and to actually improve your life in every area that, that you live. So it's one of the areas that I started to grow and started my own practice of healing and to be able to pass this healing on to other people. So you see the serendipity. There's so many ways that serendipity happens in our life. And I love the books. And these five books really help me embrace who I am as a soul. I am a divine being living in a divine time. And I am so grateful to be able to share this story about myself, seeing the serendipity in my life and what it means. Today, I help people align their mission and their passion to who they really are as spiritual beings. These five books are just a little area that can help change your life like they changed mine. So, so the name of those books, those five books, are the first one was When God Winks, How the Power of Coincidence Guide Your Life, and that was written by Squire Rochelle in 2002. And the actual second book was When the Body Says No, Exploring the Stress and Disease Connection, and that was written by Dr. Gabor Maté, and that was written in 2003. The third book I told you about was Messages of Hope, my dear friend Suzanne Giesman. And that was written in 2011. And also the fourth book also was written in 2011. And that was Message for the Tribe of Many Colors by little grandmother Keisha Crowther. And the fifth book is written by Lee Carroll. It's one of the crying books, it's number 14, and it's called The New Human, and that was written in 2017. Check those books out. You can get them all on Amazon, and of course I love Amazon because I can get the books right away. So thank you, thank you for spending this time with me, and I absolutely love sharing all things about serendipity and you got the special treat of hearing a little bit more about the books that I love that helped change my life. Thank you for helping me help you align your mission with your passion.